Yeah, I worked at Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Desire to Grow Spiritually. And uh, when the Lord uh, spoke that to me, I thought we were going to be focusing tonight <laughs> on spiritual growth. But uh, then as I began to pray and seek him, I, I found out what he wants to cover tonight is about desire, about the word desire, that he wants us to desire uh, to grow spiritually. And, and that's the beginning. That's the beginning of growing spiritually. We have to desire it. You see, uh, spiritual growth is not a random occurrence that, well, this person gets it and that person gets it and uh, other people don't get it. It's, it's not a random occurrence. It's an intentional purpose. We have to make a decision uh, to be intentional that we want to grow. And what I'm really talking about here is wanting to be in the presence of God more, wanting to know more about spiritual things. And uh, it's not about just going to uh, church services or Bible studies uh, just to be there and be a good Christian. This is about wanting more of God in our lives, mm -hmm. uh, that desire. And 1 Peter uh, uh, 2.2 2 says that uh, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow <clears throat> thereby. So we have to have that desire before we grow. And, and that's what I want to focus on tonight. Now, there are stages of growth. Uh, when we come to the Lord, uh, we're babies in Christ. We're just babies, and that's what First Peter's talking about there, as babies desire the sincere milk. Well, you can think about a little baby who wants milk. It wants uh, mm -hmm. uh, just to nurse milk, and that, and that baby will grow as, as a result of, of nursing, and we will do that too as we uh, interact with the Lord and the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, and uh, we will grow. And so babies are beginning level. And then uh, the next thing that the Bible talks about our child is a child. Uh, there are lots of different verses about a child. Uh, when in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul wrote, when I was a child, mm -hmm. I thought as a child. I acted, up I child. acted just like a child. Okay, so a baby is just barely uh, getting by and just laying there and, and nursing. But then when you come to a child, that a child is uh, uh, walking around and doing things, but they're thinking like a child. Uh, and so uh, Ephesians 4 says, uh, be not children tossed to mm -hmm. and fro. Oh. So children are unstable and they're unreliable. Uh, so it's a process. We, we go from a baby <laughs> then we grow to a child and then becomes an adult. Uh, in Hebrews uh, 11, uh, Moses, uh, when he became an adult, when he became of years, when he came of years, uh, he didn't want to be in Pharaoh's house anymore. He, mm -hmm. he uh, had enjoyed the pleasures uh, of the sin for a season, but when he became of age, when he came of age, he didn't want to do that anymore. He was willing to suffer with the things, with the children of God, mm -hmm. rather than have the pleasures in the house of Pharaoh. So you see that we can be a child, a baby, we can grow to a child, we can grow to an adult. And so that's a process. And we have to be intentional to do it. As I said, mm -hmm. to begin with, it's not just a random uh, process. It's not you get it and I don't get it. No, it's Whoever wants it, whosoever will, let them come. Let them come to the well and drink. Uh, and so it's an intentional process. And we all make that decision. Do we want to grow? Do we want more of God? Do we want to be in his presence more? Do we want to know uh, more about spiritual things? You know, Colossians 3 says, uh, that we are to desire those things that are above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. So we're to desire spiritual things. And, and uh, 
something that's interesting when you are born again you are given the holy spirit uh, your inheritance is god god made himself your inheritance that's that's who your inheritance is that's what your inheritance is it is god himself okay but that you don't get all of god to begin with you get a pledge of second corinthians uh, two and second corinthians five talked about we have a pledge we are sealed with the holy spirit so when we are born again we have the holy spirit and that's that is exciting but the holy spirit is just a down payment we we don't get everything to begin with but when we're born again we get a down payment we get a pledge we are sealed with the holy spirit and so you have the holy spirit okay now that's the reality you have the holy spirit he will never leave you and he will never forsake you uh, but what's interesting uh, Jacob uh, one day was was going through the land of Israel and he laid down and he made a little uh, rock and he laid his head on a rock and in the night he saw angels on a ladder ascending and descending from heaven ascending and descending from heaven so there he was his head was on a rock there were angels all around him and they were taking uh, requests up to heaven and they were bringing uh, provision down they were bringing blessings down from heaven and and god spoke to him right there uh, and when he went to sleep he didn't know there were angels all around him he didn't know god was all around him when he woke up he said i wasn't aware that there were angels here well that's the way that we all are when we are born again, we are given the Holy Spirit. We have a, a pledge of the Holy Spirit, the down payment of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never leave us nor forsake us, but many people do not have the reality. That they were unaware. They are unaware that the Holy Spirit uh, is with them. And so what we're going to be talking about today is how to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to know that the Holy Spirit is with us. How can we know that we are growing spiritually? Well, we know that we're growing. We made a decision. It's about a decision. We desire spiritual things. If you desire to grow, you desire spiritual things then you begin to grow and you become sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit's always been with you from the time you were born again, uh, from that day. And, and we should, uh, each of us know uh, the day we were born again. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes inside. He gives us a, a new spirit. We have a new spirit. Uh, when we are born again, we have new life in us and the spirit comes in and, and he's there. He'll be with us forever, forever and ever. And so we need to be aware of him. That's what Jacob said. Uh, there were angels here. God was here and I was not aware of it. So mm -hmm. it's becoming aware of the reality of what's going on. So when we're born again, then we need to become aware and become sensitive. So how do we become sensitive to the Holy Spirit? And that's how we grow. If we become, if we begin to communicate with the Holy Spirit, we listen to him, we hear him, we hear his voice, we speak to him, we communicate with him, then we begin to grow. That's, that's that growth mm -hmm. process it's about spiritual things. Spiritual growth is about spiritual, spiritual things. things. Amen. And so when we become aware of spiritual things, and the most important thing to begin to become aware with, of is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm, Let the mm. Holy Spirit speak to us. The Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. He's the one that has been entrusted 
to you. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do with the Holy Spirit? Well, become aware that he is with you. And that's really important. So the first thing, there are well, two. I, I, I'd like okay. to say something okay. right here. Um, <laughs> in, in a woman, as when she's uh, carrying a child, there is a point in which the baby begins to move. And that's called the quickening. And that's exactly what happened to me when I realized that there was something on the inside of me that was moving, that was alive. And, and that, that happened uh, right after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was praying in my prayer language one day. And, and all of a sudden, I just, I felt movement on the inside of me, just like I did when, you know, when, when I was pregnant uh, with my children. And, and it was so exciting to me because I knew that there was something that was alive on the inside of me that, that was alive and moving and, and living and, and, and had been activated. It had been activated in me. And I think every single person needs to, to know that, that be aware of who is inside of them and, and living there inside of them. Okay, that's good. So, so that's what we're talking about today. There is a person inside of you. He's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How do you communicate with him? You need to be sensitive to him. We're going to have mm -hmm. spiritual growth. We're going to go from a baby to a child to an adult in spiritual terms, then mm. we have to be communicating with him. We have to have an interest uh, in the, his presence and in spiritual things. Now, I want to talk about two ways that we can increase our sensitivity uh, to the Holy Spirit. And the first way is to ask uh, mm -hmm. for him to reveal himself to you. Mm. That's the first thing. This is Mark 11, verse 24, uh, verily I say unto you, well, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So this is about asking whatever you ask for, believe that you have it and you will have it. And so hmm. uh, the first thing then is to ask for more sensitivity to the presence of the Holy Spirit, to hear his voice, okay? Uh, we all need to do that. We need to be asking, mm. asking for more sensitivity. And, and you do it by faith. Everything in the kingdom is by faith. faith I mean. And so we have to ask, and we ask believing that we're going to receive the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to be sensitive to his presence. We're going to be sensitive to what he says to us and, and what he wants us to do. And, and if we don't ever ask, see, if we never ask, it's not going to happen randomly and say, I, I didn't ask, but I got all of these things. No, you have to ask for them. Ask to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You want to be aware of his presence. Don't be like Jacob and you have angels all around, around you, you and God speaking to you and <laughs> God wanting your attention and God wanting to give you blessings and, and, and you, I was not aware. It was Jacob or Israel? Oh, it was Jacob at that time, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> you have to be aware. He, he woke up and said, God was here. <laughs> yes, and I, I didn't know it. And I didn't know it. Yeah. So the first thing is ask for it. I mean. And if you ask, you ask in faith and you believe and you will receive. We know he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. But we have to become sensitive to him. He is always wanting to communicate with you. And uh, for you to hear what he says, you have to ask. You have to make yourself available. Okay, I'm here. Well, mm, what do you want mm, to say to mm, me today? Mm, mm, uh, mm. Now, I, I want to start 
at the beginning of how do you begin to hear his voice and, and start with simple things. If you haven't been hearing his voice, start with simple things. Ask him uh, what shirt to wear, uh, what shoes to wear, uh, where to go shopping, where to go to, how to go to work, what route mm, to take to, to yeah. work. Uh, begin asking questions and believing and receiving. Uh, and ask in faith. And so start with little things. Don't don't start with, uh, let me have a million dollars. That's probably not a good starting point. Start with little steps. That's what we're talking about here. Growing spiritually, taking little steps, getting closer and closer. And spiritual growth is about the Holy Spirit, about listening to his voice, hearing him, and doing what he says. And if you hear his voice, and you do what he says, and you follow him, then you are a mature adult. But if you never hear his voice, how can you be obedient to the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. He's the one we're communicating with. He's the one giving us instructions. So the first thing to do to be sensitive is to ask. Ask him to open up mm -hmm. our heart, Open up our mind and our ears and so that we can hear him. Now, let's just do that right now. Okay. Let's just do that right now. Just, you know, repeat after me. Uh, just say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask. I ask. To be more sensitive. To be more sensitive. To your Holy Spirit. To your Holy Spirit. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. And be quick to obey. And be quick to obey. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I receive it. I receive it. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. receive it because I believe it. Amen. It's my faith. I'm believing it. And that's what Mark 11, verse 24 says. Mm -hmm. If you ask, you receive. That's yes, what sir. we know. Uh, from the Bible. You know, that, it says asking you and and receive it in your heart and it will come to pass. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. that's the first way to become more sensitive. Pray. Ask. Yeah, ask. 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 And that's what we just did. We've all done that. Amen. Okay. That's the first step. Number two Hallelujah. is pray in tongues. Mm, pray mm, in mm, the mm. spirit. Uh, it, See, that is communicating with God. Praying in the spirit is communicating with him. It, it releases you from being in charge. And I have Woo, to know. Hallelujah. I have to know everything. And I have, no, it's trusting. This is about trusting today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's trusting in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's that he good. can take the words that you're saying yes. and make sense out of them. They don't make any sense to the natural mind, but you pray in the spirit and, and, and you're releasing control of it. You're yielding to him. You think it's important enough to communicate with him that you're willing to communicate with him according to his language. Amen. It, it's not, oh, I've got to communicate with the Holy Spirit, but I've got to use my, my language, language and I've got to use my points and my mm -hmm. all of my natural thinking and my control. No, yield. Yes. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. Right. I have another. I say, think sure I have, have another. May, <laughs> may have I have another example here because uh, just recently I prayed for a woman who wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She wanted to speak in tongues and, and have her prayer language. But she was to ask me the question. She said, you know, but um, I've never received it because I don't know if God can understand it. <laughs> I don't know if God can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and I said, that's his language. He understands his language. And I said, and you don't have to, she said, but, but what if I, but what if I don't understand it? And I said, as you mature in your, in your growth, in your Christian growth, then you can even ask the Lord as you pray in your prayer language, you can ask the Lord, what did I say? What am I saying? And 
I've done it. He's told me what I was saying. Sometimes you want to hear it and sometimes you don't want to hear it. And so, but, but she, she was satisfied with that, that God would understand her if she began to, to pray in her prayer language, uh, that he would understand and she received, and it was a very powerful uh, language that started coming forth. So okay. I just wanted to interject. That. Okay, so the, the <laughs> focus tonight is about our desire. Do we desire mm. to grow spiritually? Yes. If we desire to grow spiritually, we will communicate with the Holy Spirit, I and we will, we will ask him things, and, and, and we will... Uh, speak to him, to let him know what's in our heart. He, he knows what's in your heart beforehand. He knows what you need before mm -hmm. you speak it out, but he wants to hear your thoughts. He wants to hear your what's in your heart. And I'm not talking about your mind. I'm talking about what's in your heart. He wants to hear what's in your heart because see, this is about a partnership between you and the Holy oh, Spirit. And if you don't ever utter any words to the Holy Spirit, you're not operating as a very effective partner. See, we are partners with the Holy Spirit. And so we need to communicate with the Holy Spirit. He is a person. We need to communicate with him and communicate with him with his language. His la he has a language. And it's called praying in the spirit. Amen. We can be singing in the spirit or praying mm -hmm, in the spirit, mm -hmm. but that's the language. And, and so we have to say that's a higher language. That's a higher language than Chinese or a higher language than English or a higher language than Spanish. That's the highest language. Mm -hmm. That's the heavenly language. Hallelujah. And, and we want to operate in the heavenly, uh, in the heavenly realm. And how can we operate in the heavenly realm if we don't know the language, if we don't know the code, if we don't know the keys. We, we, we need to be praying in tongues. Now, I, I've talked about two ways then how to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The first was to ask. We've all asked. Everybody's asked. And secondly, to pray in tongues. And there are obviously other ways, but I do want to, to look at this concept that if we're going to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we have to be, we start by being more sensitive to other people. Ah, we need to be sensitive absolutely. to our spouse. We need to be Amen. sensitive Amen. to our children. Yes. We need to be sensitive to our parents. Amen. We need to be, see, if, if we are insensitive to the people around us, we are also going to be insensitive to the, Holy yeah, to the Holy Spirit. It all flows together. Ooh, hallelujah. You, you know, uh, there are two great commandments that uh, they discussed in, in the Gospels were to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your might. And the second one is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. See how those fit together? Uh, and, and Jesus didn't take them out and say, well, uh, one of them is important, the other one's not important. No, they go together. Go together. Uh, it, it's about loving God and loving people, being sensitive to God and sensitive uh, to people. And so if you want to desire to communicate with God and hear from God, then you also need to be sensitive and communicating with people. Uh, and, and so how you interact with people is how it sets limits on how you operate with God. If you are insensitive to people, then that's going to limit your ability to be sensitive to God. Mm, okay, mm, mm, mm. So we've got to come out of selfishness. We can't be selfish and, and still be sensitive to other people and sensitive to God. Uh, because I mean, selfishness I mean. is about me, myself, mm -hmm. and my me, me, problems me, 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 and me, my me. things and all about me. Mm. Selfishness is all about me. And so I have to come out of selfishness uh, uh, to be sensitive to people and to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I mean. So it's a process. 
And I said that earlier, it is a process. We have to desire that. We have to make some decisions that we are going to be sensitive to people, to the people around us, the people that we come in contact with, and we can't be uh, rude to our waiters at the restaurant or, or the people in line ahead of us or, or the drivers of cars ahead of us. We can't be rude to those people and, and think that everything was going to be hunky-dory and everything's <laughs> going to be just fine with, with our with relationship the, uh, with, with God. God because it all uh, connects together. You know, it said, uh, if you hate God, if you hate your brother, how can you say you love God? Oh, wow. It's connected. Wow. All of, wow. Everything's connected. And, and so mm. if you want to grow spiritually, you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But, but you also, in order for that to work, you've got to be sensitive to the people around mm -hmm. you. Okay, now I want to do an application. An application of this uh, to develop a prayer. And I, I just suggest, that if you want to grow spiritually, uh, you, you may want to write down a prayer to pray to the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm just going to give you some suggestions to start with. And if we're going to pray to the Holy Spirit for us to become more sensitive uh, to his presence, then I suggest that, that you take an approach like this, that you are confident that he's with you. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't have to pray that the Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit has always been with you mm -hmm. from the time you were born again. So you don't have to pray that he comes. So let's be confident that he's there with you and, and let's be bold and let's be joyful and, and let's partner with him and, and think about how we might pray. And I'm just going to do some suggestions. If you want to write down some notes, mm -hmm. you can. And, and there, uh, this is not a formula, but it's just a way uh, for you to think. Uh, so don't approach it by asking him to come. And secondly, don't approach it by asking him to fix your problems. Mm -hmm. This is a way to begin to communicate with the Holy Spirit and, and develop a prayer, and, and it might start like this, that you might say, I am confident and joyful that you are my amazing teacher. You, are, you provide everything I need. See, you're, you're thankful, and you're, you're focusing on what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Focus on what he said about it, because that's who he is, we know that he's your teacher. Mm -hmm. We know that he's your provider. He's your helper. He's, he's your, your guide. Comfort, comforter. And he's your comforter. And so, so just tell him, you are my comforter. You are my helper. You are my guide. I'm, I'm joyful uh, to communicate with you. A and I ask you to open up my ears, my spiritual ears, so I can hear your voice. Oh, I mean, and, I mean. and open up my spiritual eyes so I can see what you are doing and what you want me to do. Um, show me the things to come. The, mm -hmm. Show me what's ahead for me. Show me what's ahead uh, for my family. Amen, amen. Uh, show me, because Jesus said, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, when the Comforter comes, he will show me things to come. He's going to show me things in the future. And so I'm passionate about you holy spirit show me what's ahead for me uh show me what you have in store for me show me what you want me to do today show me where you want me to go today what you want me to do today uh show yourself make yourself mm. real to me uh show me speak to me uh, open my ears, open my Hallelujah. eyes. Hallelujah. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. See, be thankful, be joyful, be passionate about it. Write down a prayer, something like that. And, and then there may be other things you want to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, add in some things. Right. But start as a partnership with him. Let him be to you what Jesus said he was. 
You know, in those verses oh, that's from cute. John that's 14 cute. to John 16, those three chapters, he tells a lot about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he said, is your advantage. And you might repeat that to the Holy Spirit in your prayer and say, I'm a Holy Spirit, I'm thankful that you are my advantage. I have Hallelujah. an advantage Hallelujah. over the unbelievers that I interact with. I have an mm -hmm. advantage uh, over those people who are not following close to you. You are my advantage. Okay, repeat to him who he is relative to what Jesus said about him. Jesus explained a lot about uh, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in those three chapters. John 14, 15, and, and 16. 16. So you just pick up some of those things that, that are important to you, and, and you tell him how awesome he is. He, he, is, he is awesome. He's, he's your guide. He's awesome. that He, he, he causes you to go in the right way, Amen. and, and, and he, he doesn't cause you to lose and, and uh, uh, make mistakes and, and, and go down the wrong path. He is your guide. He is the guide to the righteous path. Mm -hmm. uh, glory to God. Be mm -hmm. joyful about it. Be thankful and, and be passionate and, and pray that kind of prayer. Uh, and often pray it. And, and that's an application of this message today. Uh, begin to communicate with him as a partner. You are his partner. You, you are in good standing with him. Amen. And, and be that partner, okay? So remember, don't just focus on asking him to come. Oh, he's already there. He'll never leave. Hallelujah. And don't just focus on fixing your problems. Uh, and that's the way uh, many, many Christians pray. They just say, oh God, come fix my problem. Come fix my problem. But now, see, this is a higher way to pray. This is a way that you are becoming his partner you're praying mm -hmm. you're, you're praying in partnership with what jesus said about you and the holy spirit he is here the holy spirit is here for your advantage and, and you begin to appropriate that and appropriate the other things that jesus said about the holy spirit appropriate them in your life make them real in your life Make them real in your life. Don't just expect something to happen if you never make a decision, if you never desire it to happen, if you never ask for it to happen. Don't think it's going to happen. You've got to make some decisions. And this message tonight is about mm -hmm. desiring more of the presence of God, more I mean, communication I mean, with the Holy I mean. Spirit, being more aware of spiritual things. Thank you for being here tonight. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Okay. Well, I think about uh, the scripture that says that we're co-laborers with the Lord. And I think that speaks of partnership. Uh, and, and Brother Fred was talking about being partners with him. And, and that takes an awareness that he's with us. And that takes an awareness uh, that we can hear from him and that we can travel with him that we can have adventures with him we can uh, hear what he wants us to do and and then we can obey and so this is um uh, that that was a very important point I, I felt I'm going to open it up in just a few moments uh, I do want to go back to the sensitivity uh, to the Holy Spirit uh, and one of those points was to come out of selfishness. And if you if you think about a baby, a toddler, um, a, a child, they're very self-centered. They they want everything that revolves around them. And and but as we grow uh, in in our in in spirituality, then we realize that that we are to put ourselves aside. It says, if you lose your life, you'll gain the life of Jesus. And, and I think about the scripture that uh, kind of um, brings those thoughts together about coming out of selfishness. And Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. 
and I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. And I was naked and you clothed me and I was in prison and you came to visit me. And in the group of people he was speaking to, they said, you know, well, when did we see all these things? When did we see you hungry and thirsty and naked and in prison? And, and we, we, we helped you. And, and Jesus says, when you do it to the least of these uh, in the kingdom, you've done it unto me. And, and he said uh, that, he, that he was pleased with that. And I believe that to, to reach that point of sensitivity, when you see someone in need and you're quick to, uh, to meet that need, uh, then, then you're growing. You're growing spiritually. And I know when we started the mission, we came out of ourselves. We came out of ourselves at that point because we saw people that were dying on the street. We saw people in the crack houses that were lying passed out on the floor. Uh, we saw people, um, women that were going to the abortion clinics. We, you know, we, we saw many, many things that caused us to know that we were not the only people in the universe and that there were people that were needing our help. And that helped us to grow spiritually. It also helped us to grow in love, you know, because love is patient, love is kind, love is, you know, um, not envious. You know, the, we all know uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, but when it becomes real uh, to you, then, then that's an indication that you're growing spiritually. And I know that we went for many years in a dormant state. Now, were we going to heaven? Of course we were, because the only way to get to heaven is Jesus and accepting him as Lord and Savior. But had we grown? Had I really grown from the time I was nine years old till I was almost 30? Uh, had I grown any? Or was I still in that, that state of dormancy? And that's, that's what I'm seeing in the body of Christ right now. I'm seeing an awakening of individuals that say, you know, I am, I'm wanting more. I hear that all the time. I want more of the Lord. I want more of his spirit. I want to do more for him. And just tell me how to get there. You know, tell me how to do that. And that this, this message tonight is a, a very powerful and profound message for all of us that if we want more, we can have more because he is limitless. He has all the love that we, that we need. He has all of the provision that, that we need. He has all of the teaching that, that we will need. And so you know, I just um, encourage you tonight uh, to to be passionate uh, about your walk with the Lord and and just desire uh, more more spirituality in in your life. 